Okay, so some of you are here for IELTS yes, and some are for Duolingo, I believe. And is there anyone for PTE? No, sir. Okay, and uh, some are for spoken English, right? Who is for spoken English? None of you is for spoken English. All of you are for either for IELTS or I think all of you are for IELTS, only one of you know you is like for Duolingo. Pardon? Okay, fine. It doesn't matter actually. If it's IELTS or Duolingo or TOEFL or any test, they all check your proficiency in the English language. How competent you are in the four components that are listening, writing, listening, reading, writing and speaking. Okay, these are the four components that you will be tested in. In PT, uh, academic, obviously your academic in English is assessed. Okay, not the street language, not the language that you speak informally or that you speak in house with your family and friend, but the language that you speak formally, okay, in a formal setting, in a seminar, in a meeting, in a college, in uh, debates, okay. So, uh, in these exams, IELTS academic, PT academic, they will be testing you academic English, okay. So, there is one very basic concept in English that we study at a very basic level in class 6th or 7th, maybe that is parts of speech. Yes. Okay, parts of speech is a very elementary concept in uh, English language. Okay? <coughs> Do you understand the importance of parts of speech? Or why they are taught to us? Yes, because the structure of the sentence depends upon part of speech. Structure of sentence, I don't think that's a good so. It may depend, yes. They are the components of our English language. Components are like listening, reading, writing, speaking as far as IELTS is concerned. What is the significance of parts of speech? Okay, first of all, do you know them? Their names? Yes, sir. Can yes. you tell their names? Yes, please. Yes. No. Okay. No, no. Okay, yes, please. Adverb, adjective, verb, uh, conjunction, preposition. Okay, very good. So you don't know anything about parts of speech? Sir, I know what is that. No, 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 uh, okay, fine, yes, interject junction is also part of speech, but we are not really interested in it. Okay, it's used verbally and it's, I think, it's informal kind of thing. So, noun, pronoun, adjective, there is no specific order, verb, adverb. Conjunction and one more I add from myself article. Okay. So we are taught from our childhood, okay, from our very basic English classes that noun is name. Okay. We were told that it's, it's animal, place, or uh, person, or Okay, but actually noun is name of anything. Anything that has a name is noun. Even if it could be something that is intangible, untangible, okay, that cannot be seen, that cannot be touched. It's just an idea or concept that is abstract noun. Okay, economy, tourism, okay, agriculture, okay, these are all nouns. So name of anything is a no. noun. Pronoun is any word that replaces noun. Pronoun is any word that replaces noun. We have personal pronouns such as he, she, it. No, it is not a personal pronoun. He, she, them, those, not those even. Okay, he, she, theirs, his, her, whom. Okay, and then we have there are seven types of pronouns. We will not go into the detail, but we are interested in relative pronouns. It and this specifically for IELTS. Okay. <laughs> then we have adjective. Adjective is 
and uh, some quality uh, property of noun any quality of noun that further describes a noun further defines a noun, noun. then we have verb action. Verb, action word okay run eat talk walk teach stand speak listen okay then we have adverb adverb further defines a verb, verb. 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 as adjective defines a noun further defines a noun adverb defines a verb preposition are small words that join uh, uh, verbs and nouns in on at under below before after okay conjunction are words that join two sentences they are very important extremely important for ielts okay because they are used to make complex sentences okay one of the requirements of ielts essay writing is you must be able to make write complex sentences okay and ideally complex compound mixed sentences so complex sentences are formed with the help of conjunction there is a specific type of conjunction known as subordinating conjunction okay we will study that in some other class but for now you just need to know that conjunctions are very important they are extremely important for you and one of the types of conjunctions known as subordinating conjunction which has two clauses one clause is dependent on the other clause with the help of these type of conjunctions we can make a complex sentence okay and then articles articles like a and the although it seems very uh, childish very basic but many people struggle to use them correctly okay they don't know how to use a and specifically the okay how when to use the okay but in this class my question to you right now is what is the significance of learning these things why why do we want to learn it and how we can use it see there is a conceptual theoretical side of education and then there is practical implementation the functional ability of performing something so understanding this concept learning this concept okay is the is the conceptual side the theoretical side how it can help us in our daily life or in our ielts writing or other exams english exam writing specifically how to apply this understanding and knowledge into into practice we don't think we don't learn things for learning itself no? that is only for exams we want to learn them so that we can apply them in our lives we can get benefited out of it what is the benefit of learning parts of speech in a real world in a functional environment in a as we say applied physics applied mathematics so what is the application of this anyone think so if you apply a parts of speech in your daily life you can easily make sentence if you know about the noun such as Uh, such as we can easily speak in English, like uh, it is a cat. If we um, easily use and uh, see, yeah, you are right uh, to some degree. But see, by speaking, we don't care about parts of speech. We don't think of parts of speech every day. We speak. We don't think about now. Speaking is a social skill. Yes, sir. Okay, you can learn to speak any language without ever learning grammar. without ever learning all these things okay we can speak our native languages very fluently and effortlessly we don't know if it's even i cannot write my native language ironically my native language i cannot write it so it is used for tenses no these are not tenses tenses only are verb when we when we change the verb Forms. and sometimes the pronoun then uh, the tenses are formed verb tenses are all related to verb it's not about tenses so <clears throat> i want you to think about the question okay so that when you know the answer you can realize it not just listen it or understand it you can realize it the question again i repeat is that why we learn something okay to make a complete structure of sentence complete structure as far as grammar is concerned is found by svo subject verb object as long as these three are present in a sentence you do not need to worry about the structure of the sentence 
Pakistan is an agricultural country. So it's a complete sentence. The structure is completely fulfilled. Although there is one verb in it, which is parts of speech, there is one object in it, which is parts of speech, which is there is one subject in it, which is parts of speech. So all these words are somehow parts of speech, but that is not the actual functional ability that you can gain. You can make the sentence without knowing this thing. You can make that, you can say that Pakistan is an agricultural country, 70% of its population directly or indirectly rely on agriculture, like other sectors such as livestock and horticulture, okay, it contributes to our GDP, uh, blah, 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 without understanding the concept of parts of speech, okay. So, let me tell you, now we understand the question, <coughs> the answer is, how we can apply this knowledge, this understanding in our IELTS writing. Let me give you an example of adjective plus noun. Anyone of you can, can you give me an example of adjective plus noun? Uh, you are wearing what? Your top. It's a shirt. So shirt is a noun. And what color it is? White. So you are wearing a white shirt. White shirt. So technically, grammatically, white is adjective, and shirt is no. noun. Noun. Okay. White shirt. Blue sky. Deep sea. Okay. Uh, glass table. Okay. All these are adjectives plus noun pairs. But this is how we teach them to children. Because children can only understand what they can see physically. They cannot understand the abstract ideas. Okay? For IELTS, for advanced English concepts, you need to take it to an abstract to level. And that is where you can use it. For example, if I say adverse, effect. So, what is adverse? Grammatically, in parts of speech. Adverse is bad, no? Yeah, it's an adjective. Okay, bad, negative. And effects? Effects. Okay, outcome of something. Adverse effect is grammatically equivalent to white shirt. They both are same, grammatically. They, these are adjectives and these are nouns. You need to use like these pairs in your essay. Okay? For example, if I say fruitful results, okay? <laughs> like uh, growing more trees will have a fruitful uh, impact or result on our, on, on our atmosphere. Okay, uh, carbon dioxide emissions adversely affect, adversely is adverse, adversely affects our, then it will be other effect, okay, if it is used as verb effect, then it will be with A, okay, so emission of CO2 adversely affects our environment, okay, so endangered species, species that are at the verge of extinction, Okay, like white Bengali tiger maybe or snow leopard or okay, some species. So endangered species. Okay, unprecedented growth. These are two two words, they come in pair. They are actually called collocations. Okay. This is very important concept to understand. These are called collocations, and you must use them in your essay. It will make your language beautiful. Okay? Like <coughs> highly decorated officer. Highly decorated. So highly is adverb, decorated is adjective, and officer is noun. No. So this is the use of parts of speech, at least when it comes to adjective, verb, and adverb, and noun. First, these four. 
I'm not talking about prepositions or conjunctions or articles right now. Just if you take these four, okay? So you can make very nice uh, uh, vocabulary actually, okay? Uh, like suppose if I say heavy rain, okay? Uh, this qualification comes in different uh, uh, types, like you can, first one is adjective plus noun, okay? <laughs> then we have verb plus noun, take decision, to take a, so allocations are actually little more than just simply pairs, so allocations are words that often come together, we are used to listen them or write them together, okay, native speakers always use them, use them. suppose if there is a lot of rain outside, so you will say heavy rain, heavy traffic, okay, so, <laughs> to take a decision, okay, to make a cup of tea, okay, draw salary, we draw salaries, to commit a crime, the, co the commit word will always go with crime, to commit a crime, okay, I will be providing you a detailed uh, document, PDF file, where you will be have hundreds of different collocations of different categories. We could have uh, adverb, plus verb plus noun okay so densely populated area okay densely populated area okay <laughs> highly effective vaccine okay so this is actually what the examiner is looking for in your essay, in your writing. When you are able to see, this will actually make a big difference from the uh, informal to, this will be the use of these collocations or these skills will be a transition from informal language to formal language. When you start using this kind of vocabulary, okay, that will actually uh, be academic vocabulary, okay. Let us see if I have any, um, because I have recently changed my laptop, so so these are basically some of the types of collocations that we need to understand and we need to use in our essay and while speaking as well. Adjective plus noun. Adjective plus noun, I already gave the example. Okay? So, saying as like a red tie, okay? Or unprecedented growth are same grammatically. But once, once you understand this basic concept, that we can, we just have to take a property, a quality, and a noun, but they must be abstract. So, then you can use it easily. Okay? And for your essay, you can memorize five or six good collocations or seven or ten good collocations. Okay? If you find it difficult, okay, to be very creative during the essay because you would have attempted your listening test, your reading test, then writing, then writing task one, okay, then the essay is the last part of the test as far as IELTS is concerned. Okay, so you would have used your focus and your mental energy for <coughs> two hours. Okay? So, uh, you can memorize 5, 6, 10 good collocations. So, we have adverb plus adjective pairs as well. Okay, we'll look into them. We have verb plus expression with preposition. We have verb plus adverb and we have phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are actually informal. Okay, then we must not use them in academic writing. Okay, suppose breakup. What is breakup? Breakup when we... Uh break uh, with some uh, friend. When you break a glass? <laughs> when you break up with our friend? Yes. It's uh, usually among between couples. Yes. Okay, yes. between couples. Okay, husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend. So break up is a phrasal verb. Okay, similarly break in. What is break in? Break in is when you, when you enter someone's home yes. with, with bad intentions. Okay, for stealing something, breaking into someone's house, okay? <clears throat> so there are lots of phrasal words, we'll look into them. But first see the first one which is adjective plus noun. So these are all adjective plus noun uh, collocations, 
Okay? <laughs> Unwanted consequences. Again, CO2, my favorite topic. Burning CO2 has unwanted consequences on our environment. Okay? We never wanted our environment to get polluted. We just wanted to drive or reach from one place to another place. Okay? <clears throat> Which is another very nice word for unwanted results. I am not getting a remembering it right now. Dire consequences, inevitable consequences, something that, that cannot be stopped. Okay, it must happen. Utter failure, sheer ignorance, grave negligence, adequate resources. Okay, although Pakistan has adequate resources, its people suffer because of negligence, corruption, and mismanagement on the part of its bureaucracy and politicians. Appropriate actions must be taken okay, to resolve something. Workable solution, fruitful results, unexpected results, adverse effect, unpardonable offense, na kabale, mafi jurum, if I translate it in Urdu, punishable act, devastating effects. Again, shutting trees, cutting down trees has devastating effect or impact. There is a slight difference between the meaning of effect and impact that is another topic where we will study precision of vocabulary, how precisely we can use our vocabulary. But for now you can use them interchangeably. Invaluable contribution, unchallenging faith, unprecedented growth. Okay, so uh, these are all adjective plus noun pairs. <clears throat> then we have collocations with adverb plus adjective. Adverb plus adjective. Entirely is adverb. Li, L, Y, Li are normally adverbs. Entirely different. Then we need to add one noun as well. So entirely different results maybe. Okay? Physically challenged people, yes. like disabled people. Utterly stupid solution or decision. Okay? Practically impossible mission. Okay? Virtually everywhere present, deeply motivated, and richly decorated, and fully aware, completely ignorant, meticulously calculated. It's a very beautiful word, meticulous. Meticulously means <clears throat> in very detail. Okay? Planned to the last detail. Beautifully crafted, cleverly devised, totally confused, personality. Okay? This is your starting point of your good English. When you start using these type of collocations in your spoken and written English, so suddenly it will be a jump to a to good academic English because see I does not only check your English, it checks the quality of your English, how well you can speak, okay? How well you can speak and how well you can communicate with native speakers, okay? And if you are taking IELTS academic, which I uh, I am sure that all of you are students, uh, you are, are you taking you are taking GT? What about rest of you? Why are you doing like this? Keep your hands down. Yes, please. I stand up. GT. Yes. Okay. Academic. 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 Duolingo. Academic. Academic. Duolingo. and GT. Okay. In general training, uh, you are not supposed to possess that strong academic vocabulary, but for students who are preparing for academic IELTS and even Duolingo. Because Duolingo is for admission in foreign universities in the countries where English is spoken as first language. So even you guys require academic vocabulary. Okay? So what if we use these words in GT? You can use. There's nothing wrong with using them. Okay? They are very nice, okay? Totally logical, entirely loyal, grossly high. <coughs> then we have collocations with verb plus noun. They are very important. They are extremely important, but not for your essay, for your spoken English. Because native speakers always use these verbs with these nouns. Okay? If you want to sound like a native speaker or if you will be ever communicating with a native speaker, then you must use these uh, collocations. Okay? So, Take exercise, we take exercise, we don't do exercise. Okay, doing exercise is wrong English. Make mistakes, we make mistakes. Okay, 
if your vocabulary is very limited you will use only these words okay from my experience i have noticed that students with very poor and limited vocabulary and not be aware of this concept they, they know only these words like do take make big small get thing these are words that you can use everywhere okay my big brother my house is very big they are very big people okay or do when we say bade log so big people with influential people so if you don't have this word in your vocabulary where you can say they are very influential people okay or they have political affiliation then you will naturally say they are big people okay if they have a big house it means they have a spacious house or maybe a massive house huge house okay thing they will use the government can do many things to solve the problem but government can do many things to solve the problem government can take several steps to solve the problem so if you possess good english academic english higher english you will never say thing okay steps steps okay and you will use these these are words there are some few other also that are very bad words okay i will say that they are uh, like Use in a collocation. So, for example, to take exercise is not wrong. Here we need to use take. But if I say I took my degree, it's completely wrong. It's not wrong actually, but it's not the ideal English that you should speak. I received my degree. Okay, rather than saying I took my degree, yeah, I got my degree. Okay, I received my degree. I received a letter. Okay. Although I can say I got a letter, okay. So you have to avoid these words unless until they are part of a collocation, and you need to use proper high-level vocabulary. So commit crime, commit suicide, make a speech, give a presentation, draw salary, take exam. This is very interesting one, okay. Because in Urdu, we normally say that I have exam diya, I have exam dene ja raha hu, okay. मैं एग्जाम दूंगा इन उर्दू वी से आई विल गिव इट इफ यू ट्रांसलेटेड बट इन इंग्लिश इज नॉट लाइक दैट इन इंग्लिश यू टेक एन एग्जाम ओके इट्स अ वेरी कॉमन मिस्टेक दैट वी मेक इन इंग्लिश वी नेवर से दैट आई विल गिव एग्जाम वी टेक एग्जाम वी सिट इन एग्जाम ओके वी सिट वी सिट इन एग्जाम और वी टेक एन एग्जाम वी वी नेवर गिव एग्जाम ओके बिकॉज़ देयर आर लैंग्वेज फ्रॉम लैंग्वेज आर सर्टेन थिंग दैट वेरी to achieve a target to achieve a goal so okay to get salary means to get your salary lena to to get yes lena yes yeah. high in price okay a significant hike in the prices of petrol has been observed in past few months this is a very good sentence to use in your essay you like it again please Okay. Mitigate is a very nice word again. <coughs> Mitigate means to solve. Okay, to to reduce effects, negative effects of something. And all these collocations you can study them, them at your convenience. Then we have verb plus adverb. Verb plus adverb. adverb. act accordingly so first verb and then adverb act accordingly okay bleed profusely like someone is in an accident okay they are bleeding profusely act instantly okay rise steeply okay the price of petrol rose steeply in past few months again for task one even if you are attempting ielts academic the task writing task one will be report writing Okay, you will present it with a bar chart, with a pie, or with a <coughs> with a table, okay, or with a uh, diagram, and you would have to write a report. And mostly, it will be data driven, okay. So you need this kind of vocabulary for it. 
and then at the end I guess we have phrasal verbs we don't have phrasal verbs let me show you phrasal verbs as well okay so break down blow up come, come across take on let down let down means let down they are not used in their literal meaning get jana to bilkul bhi nahi hai let down karna kisi ko to break someone trust i guess fear of support to help someone as they had hoped or expected okay i am expecting something from someone and they uh, they did not do it for me so they okay they let me down hang on hang on means no hang is not used in its literal meaning phrasal verbs apne lit you know literal you know literal like uh, uh, words hote hain lekin unka apni ek meaning hote hain aap bhi to dekhe bilkul basic understanding ke pehle mein i think we need to develop you must first understand the literal and contextual or symbolic meaning of the words do you do you understand difference between literal and contextual or metaphorical or symbolic or whatever you say literal means dictionary meaning lafzi matlab lughvi matlab okay so suppose fat what is the meaning of literal meaning of fat mota mota okay in urdu also mota but suppose if at the end of the lecture i ask you that now i'm going to repeat moti moti baatein to here mota means little yahan pe moti ka kya matlab hai important important main lafzon ke matlab change hote hain the meaning of words change according to the context sometimes we use words in their literal meaning jo ka lafzi matlab hota hai ya jo ka lughvi मतलब होता है ये जो डिक्शनरी भी नहीं होता है जो एक्चुअल भी नहीं होता है सपोज मैं कहता हूँ आई वेंट टू डॉक्टर एंड डॉक्टर सॉ मी सो डॉक्टर सी न्यू मीन्स डॉक्टर चेकअप डायग्नोजिंग यू इट्स नॉट लाइक हिस्स लिटरली लुकिंग एट यू ओके आई से आई वेंट टू सदर एंड आई सॉ रिश्पा सो दिस इज लिटरली सींग हर ना context what is context context is a kya hai context kehte hain ke kisi lafz ke aage piche pure jumle mein us lafz ka kya matlab ban raha hai theek hai suppose main kehta hu yesterday i bought a mouse a new mouse okay but when i went home when i opened the uh, bag it, it it was dead it died on the way so which mouse i'm talking about rat rat i'm talking about rat rodent this mouse cannot die yeah. so you can understand from the context is a get the context ke bhai lafz ke aage piche pure jumle mein us lafz ka kya matlab yesterday i bought a mouse a new mouse when i reached home i found out that i find out that it was not working so which mouse i'm talking about now this one i'm talking about this mouse the computer mouse okay i never mentioned which mouse but from the wordings in the sentence itself explained to the listener that which mouse i'm referring to this is called context jaise matan ka hawala bhi aap keh sakte hain siya wa sabab bhi keh sakte hain urdu mein theek hai lekin contextually lafzon ke matlab change ho jate hain i was reading No word will be used in its literal meaning. All words in advanced English, all words are used in their contextual meanings. Okay, like simply heavy rain. Okay, heavy rain somehow sounds like physically heavy, but you got the idea. Okay. Okay. So, phrasal verbs are not used in their literal meanings. Hang ka hang करने से कोई तालुक नहीं है. Hang on, just hang on. ंग्सफोर्ड लर्निंग 
bump into somebody, to meet somebody by chance. I bumped into Simon this morning. I bumped in, into Simon this morning. So these are phasal verbs. This is very important to know because when you will go abroad, when you will go to English speaking country, you will encounter them a lot. Native speakers will be using them a lot. And you'll be wondering that <laughs> what is bump and what is hang, okay? But they are informal and you must not use them in your academic or formal writing or even your essay, even in GT general essay also. Okay? So, recapping everything, today we learned the practical implication of parts of speech. Why we learn parts of speech? When we teach children, we tell them that adjective defines a noun. Okay? So, blue shirt. Okay? But when we teach to adults, we don't tell them physical about physical objects. We, we tell them about abstract concepts, about abstract nouns. Okay? So, blue shirt and acquired abilities or innate again it's a very good word innate in, innate it's a very nice word innate means uh, uh, like the, the quality that you are born with built in okay yes. so uh, uh, humans have innate uh, love for arts Okay, or innate inclination towards arts. Okay, so this, this is as good as saying blue shirt or white marker or black marker. Grammatically they are the same, but these are abstract concepts. Okay, similarly we could have all these pairs. I will be giving you this file actually, so you can set it at home. Uh, Adjective plus noun, adverb plus adjective, verb plus noun, verb plus expression with preposition, and verb plus uh, adverb, and then phrasal verb. Okay? Next time when you speak or when you write, whenever you produce language, English language, you must use them. Okay? And something interesting, this concept is not limited to English only. You can use them in any language. This is language independent concept. You can beshumar fawaid. Okay, if in if in Urdu I say beshumar fawaid. Okay, janleva maraz. Okay, so all the same, the same adjective plus uh, noun or adverb or whatever. Okay, khali ke hakiki. I think this is uh, noun plus adverb. Hakiki would be adverb and Khalik would be noun. Khalik Hakiki is a Jamil when we say. When we even use formal Urdu, even we use them in Urdu, in Persian, okay, uh, uh, in other languages, in all languages, I, I think they, they must be used in the same way, okay. So it's not only English related concept, okay. Jan Bas Sepahi. Say Khuddar Riyasat Okay IMF ke paas nahi jati See so this kind of language the, the, the basic concept is of producing formal and academic language Okay And, the, and the, with the help of uh, these few four words This just noun, adjective, verb and adverb We can very easily and nicely produce academic vocabulary Okay so in the next class, we will be reading uh, preposition we won't study because it's simply in on that. I hope you all can use them easily. In the next class, we will, we will be study conjunctions and articles in detail. You must know where to use a and the. And there are five different types of conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunction, correlative conjunction, conjunctive adverbs, and conjunctive pronouns. We will be studying all five of them. We'll be understanding, we'll be studying their definitions, their examples, but again, conceptual sight, understanding is one thing, and the functional ability to produce them is another thing. In the IELTS exam, you will not be asked to define conjunctions. They will not ask you about the type of conjunctions. They will not ask parts of speech, name parts of speech. 
you have to convert your theoretical understanding into a functional ability where you can produce these things. Okay? Fine? Any questions? Fine, so that's it for today. Thank you.